John Nelson Darby is a very interesting man. He is known for starting the Exclusive Brethren, a spinoff of the Plymouth Brethren. He actually wrote his own version of the Bible, and it was based on the Codex Vaticanus, published in 1859, and Codex Sinaiticus, discovered in 1844. His version actually changed many key doctrines. What's most interesting about John Nelson Darby is his view of salvation. Here in his chart, you see his dispensational salvation and secret rapture doctrines. These are the two most prominent things that he is known for. He breaks history up into several time periods. As you can see here, innocence, conscience, government, promise, law, grace, tribulation, and the kingdom. Now, although God does deal with different men in different ways at different times, salvation has always been by faith alone. According to the dispensational view, salvation by faith is only since the cross until the secret rapture. This is a fundamental flaw in doctrine. Salvation has always been by faith. It has never been by works. I have discovered that most teachers that teach some men obtain salvation through their works at some time ultimately are preaching a work salvation themselves. And such is the case with Darby. Darby's view of salvation is dependent upon seeing a changed life and seeing the works. He has strange views on the scriptures, on God and on salvation and baptism. John Nelson Darby is absolutely most famous for this secret rapture doctrine. Nowhere in scripture or history has anyone else before him taught that Jesus would return secretly without anyone seeing him and resurrect the church. This is a fundamental flaw in understanding the resurrection. You have to understand, the Bible does talk about the resurrection, but it does not talk about a rapture. Most people think they are one and the same, and generally speaking, I would say, sure, they are. However, let's look at the Bible itself, and let's look and see what the Bible calls the rapture. In 1 Thessalonians 4, he says, For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. So here this event is called the coming of the Lord. In verse 16, at the end of the verse, he says, it talks about those that are dead in Christ shall rise first. That is the resurrection that Jesus preached about and Paul preached about. Daniel preached about it, and so did Job. All of your Old Testament prophets understood this. In verse 17, it says, Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. Now, this is where the rapture doctrine comes from. The words caught up in Latin, apparently, means rapture. Now, the Bible didn't use that word, and this is a description of what happens to the body at the event called the coming of the Lord and the resurrection. When the Lord comes, he will resurrect all believers and your body will be caught up. In the next chapter, he says, For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. You must understand what most people call the rapture. They have a misunderstanding of biblical doctrine. God called it the resurrection. God called it the coming of the Lord. God called it the day of the Lord. And what Darby did was he said, the coming of the Lord is one day and the rapture is a secret day that comes before the coming of the Lord. This was part of a greater conspiracy of Zionism, which would establish an Israel state for the sake of an antichrist that would one day come. Most political Zionism conflicts with the Bible. In fact, we're actually warned 
that an antichrist will come before Jesus resurrects us. In 2 Thessalonians 2, he says, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. He's saying the day of the resurrection, when Jesus comes and we are all gathered together, it is not at hand. Well, if it's not at hand, then what must come first? He says, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. This is the Antichrist. This is a false Messiah that will come to the nation of Israel in the end times, and the whole world will receive him. They will receive him as the Maitreya, as the Mahdi Imam. They will receive him as a Christ consciousness. The whole world is looking for a man that can save them, and he is a false god. In verse 4 it says, who opposeth and exalted himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. I want to warn you about Darby's false chart. Salvation has always been by faith alone. Somebody that believes in dispensationalism believes that salvation can be earned by your good works, and they believe in a secret rapture that the Bible does not teach. Jesus spake very clearly of this. He will return, and he will resurrect all of the dead when he returns. This is the coming of the Lord and the resurrection that we look forward to. I hope this helps. God bless.